I'm out here in the garden. I just did an asparagus update. And I'm seeing something I do not like to see. I saw something up here too. And I was like, that better not be a friggin' deer track in here. Let me show you the one that I saw earlier that I thought was a deer track. And wasn't really sure. Is that one. But usually I can see deer tracks like... Even if they're a couple days old and they didn't sink into the mud, I can usually tell a deer track in this soft soil. And I don't really see it anywhere else. But, I don't know. I hope it ain't deer tracks. I mean, there's basically one there, one there one there actually looks like there's a couple right here those over there that over there that right there almost like they jumped the fence back here which i don't know how that's possible that's seven foot fence post and i put barbed wire across it they were jumping it when i just had the fence only so i put the barbed wire up and that for the most part fix them back here some wild blackberries they don't really get very big but you know what they taste as good as the big blackberries i grow and i was coming back here to check on these blueberries is what i was really doing and they're just now starting to change colors i see something wrong with that top one there i don't know if i got sunburn or what happened to it Surprised the birds haven't ate all of these yet. So let me tell you all this strange stuff that I was out here doing today. I had bought some ambrosia corn because I noticed I was getting low of corn in the freezer. Now I said I wasn't going to do any gardening this year, but part of the reason was because I have most of the stuff that I normally grow and can. I still had plenty left, except for corn. Um, and I had a packet of ambrosia corn supposed to be in 200 seeds so i laid out four rows of 50 and um i got it from burpee off of uh like a direct ship from burpee it was amazon but it's 200 seeds per packet and when i got the 200 laid out i realized there was enough for a whole row 
and I was counting the seeds and there was literally 250 seeds in that packet. I am not going to complain about an extra 100 ears of corn, assuming there was a 100% success rate in growing. Now the other thing that I did, you probably noticed me hand watering this, and there's a reason. Uh, when I filled up the hot tub, I kind of went against one of my things to always clean up as I go. And I left the garden hose out. And then in my anxiousness to get the yard mode with the new Royobi battery powered electric riding mower, I ran over the garden hose. So I'm waiting on a hose barb to fix it. It takes 100 foot of hose to get to my garden. And I've basically only have 50 foot so i had to hand water these seeds in now i used less water on this last row because the soil over here felt moist whereas the other soil felt dry when i was planting the seeds now the other thing that i did <laughs> i had a bunch of sweet potatoes left over from last year and i don't normally plant them this way but because they basically already sprouted inside of i had them stored inside of a plastic bag and they sprouted inside the bag i i just literally planted the whole sweet potatoes now i do have kind of like my master sweet potatoes you've seen it in videos if you've seen me grow any sweet potatoes uh start in the past i always keep three sweet potatoes growing in my house year round reason why I keep three it's two different varieties and uh, one was in case that one went bad I had a backup of it because it's actually my favorite sweet potato the other one was just an experiment it's still going um, I actually have uh, sweet potato slips or what will be slips in a glass of water now now it's the middle of June sweet potatoes normally take about 104 days uh, between 115 and 140 days to grow but you know last year it didn't get cold until nearly christmas so i'm gonna risk it um this corn ambrosia corn only takes about i think it's 65 days so plenty of time for that and my goal is hopefully also my goal is to test this garden uh, with this soil and not using the raised beds now I planted my corn rows three feet apart I put my seeds every six inches that's a little close generally they say a foot apart but as long as you have wide rows you can kind of crowd your corn stalks um, not only that birds will probably get some even though I've got the owl up there I need to put my other owl out here come to think of it I should do that here in a few minutes but so anyways what i did was i tilled the garden again in the uh time lapse video hopefully it turned out this time i tilled the garden i leveled out mostly just where the rows were going to be um then i put down some triple 10 fertilizer got it tilled in kind of shallow and uh and then so this will be growing this will get about six feet tall and what it's going to do i'm going to plant this in the fall with cool weather crops because the sun rises over there in the east and it sets over there you can kind of see it setting up there and with this corn being here all this is going to be in shade now so i'm going to do like probably some uh brussels sprouts and uh, cabbage over here a lot of it brussels a lot of brussels sprouts and cabbage because one of the things i've never discussed on youtube and people that kind of know me know me know that i did this but every year i would pick like one crop when i had the raised beds and i would overplant that crop take example corn you know, I might do four beds of corn out of the 12, and then that way I didn't have to grow corn the second year. So I, I was basically growing enough to last me for two years. I would do one big crop, and then 
I didn't have to plant it the next year. And then the next year I'd pick something else, maybe green beans and I over plant it and I'd grow enough to last two years. And then maybe the next year I'd do peas. So I kind of always done that. Um, I don't know why I've always done that. I think it was more of a space issue and, you know, <laughs> seed packets, you know, when you do seed to seed gardening like this corn, I can't save the, the, the kernels and make it seed because it's a hybrid corn. Now, there are some of the heirloom corn that I like but all the sweet corn that i like is pretty much hybrid so you just can't save those seeds and that's probably another reason why i do it also um i do have some heirloom corn corn seed i don't like to mix different kinds of corn in the same garden so i just make the best that i can um, i'm also going to plant oh i don't know i probably stuck 30 sweet potato cuttings in a glass of water and i know it's kind of late to get them you know slip started but it's the middle of june and they like the heat so here in about another week or two i can take them and plant them in the garden also and probably i'm going to put them they don't mind clay soil and this down here doesn't really have hardly any or actually none does not have any of that dirt from up there so you can actually see that it is clay down here pretty heavy clay and that's where i'll plant the sweet potatoes um, i'll have to leave enough room to get the tiller down here which i do have enough room and the other thing is too with these rows being so wide i can actually take my electric tiller down through here and knock the weeds down so that's another reason why i kind of did the corn this way anyways that's all for now just wanted to give you an update i still have some work to get done on the new mower i still have to take the deck off and get the blades put on i had some other stuff i wanted to get done today but man it's been hot even though you know everybody kind of knows this week's been crazy hot so that's all for now thanks for watching as always god bless you god bless your families god bless your homesteads and before I forget, <laughs> I should have put the ending after this. I do have a video coming up on seed to seed gardening for onion seeds. It'll be soon. I've been saying that.